Hello, hello, it's Kaga, and welcome to the Fire Tuna Club. So, if you're here, that means you're ready to start a project with me. And you know how this works, if you start a project with me, you better finish it. Am I salty? Yeah. I knew this girl named Susan once. She started a project, started another project, and 50 projects later, she didn't finish anything. The pile fell down on her, and I never saw her again. You'll need a few basic craft supplies, and if you don't have them, a quick trip to Walmart should get you all sorted out. What you will need is a printable hat pattern. You can find one over at my Patreon. It's a free post, don't worry. Link is below in the description box. Some craft foam. A little bit more. The color doesn't matter. Get your scraps too. Recycle some doll packaging. Cereal boxes work too. You'll also want a sharp, stabby implement. If you need an adult for this, go ahead and get one. Also, technically part of what I just mentioned, you will want to get scissors as well. You'll also need a writing implement. A pen is probably best, but if your pencil works on your recycled cardboard, go for it. You'll also need a hot glue gun, preferably one that's cleaner than mine. You'll also need a bit of glue and paint of your choosing. This is completely optional, but I have a baking mat exclusively for crafting situations, so I don't glue anything to my desk. So go ahead and plug your hot glue gun in, get your scissors and your pattern, and start cutting while you wait. Just in case you're wondering why there's two top pieces, it depends on where the seam will sit. My first prototype was done with a top seam. The sample for the video is done with a side seam. Now that you have your pattern cut out, I did cut the hat brim out on some recycled cardboard just to make it easier to trace. Get your foam and your pencil and lightly trace your pattern onto your foam. As you can see here, technically the side seam and the hat brim are part of the same piece. Chances are you will not successfully cut them together, but live adventurously like I did and you might succeed. I sure didn't. Which brings me to an important point. Your stabby implements must be sharp. If you use a box cutter, X-Acto knife, whatever it is, it must be sharp. My first cutout, I used an X-Acto knife that was very obviously dull. Anyone? I went back on the second round and used my box cutters with a fresh blade, no problem. Actually a little bit dangerous, remember, get an adult with sharp objects. No, get an adult to cut with sharp objects, that's what I meant to say. And now that you've got all your foam cut out, why don't we go back to that hot glue gun? I hope you didn't forget it was there. So we're gonna start assembling the pieces. You'll wanna get your hot glue gun and section by section glue the body sides together. Three easy ways to get a nice clean seam is to press your glue into a non-stick surface like I'm doing there and it will blend pretty good up against your foam. Option two is to take the tip of your glue gun Warm up the glue, use a silicone glove or a thimble, and rub away the extra while it's still hot, or using that scrap foam I mentioned before, rub it and get the friction to warm it up and get that glue gone. To avoid becoming incredibly aware of sausage fingers, you'll wanna start with the body and assemble it to the top. Now, even though I've already made like four or five hats at this time, I still could not get the body to the top straight. Don't worry, foam is largely forgiving. Get a pair of sharp scissors or your X-Acto knife. No dull blades. Just cut off any excess if you got it on a little crooked, okay? Attach the hat body to the hat brim in the same section by section manner that you did the hat body. From here on out, the rest really is up to you, but I will give you a quick play by play of how I made the steampunk hat and the gothic hair clip. A key tip to working with foam is to prime it either with glue or mix in the glue to your paint so when you paint onto your foam, it'll keep the foam from sucking your paint up like a sponge. To make the pipe for the hat, I used a strip of paper, 
Rated my kids glue supplies because glue wall makes the paper a little too wet. Used my exacto knife handle to start the roll and then continued to roll it by hand making sure it was nice and tight. I used some of that scrap foam to make the actual furnace door. I had an unfortunate Q-tip laying around that was sacrificed in the name of the hinge. Using my hot glue gun and the silicone fingertip cover, I actually was able to make some bolts for the hat. Some spare wire was put on there. Why, I don't know, but it looked good, so why not? You remember that packaging, right? It wasn't just used to make the template. I used a lot of it to add paneling to the hat. And then I drowned it in paint of my choosing. Thus, the final product looks a bit like this. It looks pretty good for having no idea what I was doing when I started, don't you think? Let's see what we got here. Yeah, this is totally how I did these two hats because once I had made them, I didn't actually have any plans on what they were going to be. So, when I say glue in this project, I mean situational. If you're going to use fabric, use fabric glue. If you're going to paint, use Elmer's glue. If you're going to stick everything on there with a hope and a dream and a prayer, use hot glue. <laughs> so that lace you see here right now, forget about it for a while. We're gonna go straight to putting fabric onto this hat. I use my handy dandy tacky glue and smother the hat in it. Go figure. And yeah, you probably noticed that was the hat I primed with the intention to paint. That's what happens when you don't start with a plan. Smush a piece of fabric on there. It only has to hang over a little bit. You're going to be cutting off the rest and clipping a lot, a lot, a lot around the edge of the hat. Don't worry, don't cut the hat, just the fabric. The glue will handle everything else. And when I said a lot, I hope you cut a lot. The more clips you put in it, the smoother it'll be. Once you smooth it down around the hat, the glue will hold the fabric down. I really do love waiting for glue to dry. Clip off any extra that hasn't been glued down and then repeat the process with the rest of the hat. Don't worry too much about where you might see seams or leftover bits of fabric. In true mini top hat fashion for the hair, you can go wild with trim and cover up any spots that might look unsightly. Now to turn this unfinished top hat into a wonderful little hair clip, you just need a little bit of felt, an actual hair clip, and your hat brim pattern. Using your hat brim pattern, follow the outer circle to make the bottom felt piece for your hat. Then, with your scissors in the center, cut two parallel lines for your hair clip to slide through and attach it to the bottom of your hat. Why didn't I talk about how to put on any of the lace or trim? I shouldn't have to. This is such a free form idea. Do what you want with it. Throw flowers on it, throw feathers on it, throw more fabric on it. Cover it in six pounds of netting if you want. Make it yours. All you need is the base hat to start. The rest is up to you. If you want to show me you liked what you saw and you want to see more, like the video, subscribe to the channel, you can even hit that little bell button for alerts, or you can just leave a comment saying how awesome your top hat is. Remember, around here when we start a project, we aim to finish it even if it hurts. Not really, don't hurt yourself, just have lots of fun with it if you can, okay? Thanks for watching.